My name is Leslie Linball, though in the online world I'm known as 1% Yellow. This video was created for Dr. Alec Koros's ECI831 class and reflects my attempt to become a social artist. Through this project, I hope to connect individuals from my undergraduate university, the Augustana campus of the University of Alberta, with individuals from the University of Mary Washington, who are exploring the possibilities for liberal arts education online. The point of contact between these two schools is their mutual membership in the Council of Public Liberal Arts Colleges, or COPELAC. In part four of this series, we will take a look at the second word, active learning. In editing the interviews for this piece, struck by the varied responses. I centered on three main ways this word is interpreted. Active learning by moving out of the classroom, active learning by creating opportunities for ownership, and active learning within the classroom. Okay, the next one is active learning. Oh, that's the only arena that's worth going into. I'm not sure there's any kind of non-active learning. <laughs> Active learning is uh, provoking, is stimulating, is telling uh, the other one, take part in it. It's um, going outside of the classroom as well and applying your learning to um, quote unquote real life experiences, um, forms of community service learning, I would say are active learning. I, I'm, a, I'm a great proponent of learning by doing, doing it yourself. Um, is the only way to, to learn and the only way to really know if you're getting it. The classroom environment is sterile and it's very difficult even with our communication abilities and our pictures and everything else for people to feel engaged by, by sitting there looking. The idea is simple, make things. Like it's not only about reproducing the paper but let's make things that are maybe outside of that traditional notion. Of where they're not just consuming content again, but where they're doing something with, um, with the, dis the content of the course, with the activities of the course, that it feels um, as though they are really um, becoming creators of something um, and taking ownership of it. Active learning is taking an initiative or investing personally in your own learning. So going above and beyond course requirements. So putting in extra time to research something that's interesting to you that's not necessarily required of the course. Yeah, that, that it's not something that's done to you, uh, but you have a, a say in, in where that goes. Active engagement spins off into enthusiasm. It spins off into, into ownership. And people will say, uh, my study, my people, my animals, my, and as soon as that my word is in there, um, you're, you've got it made. You don't have to create a need to learn. They're, at, they're demanding it. The opposite of active learning being passive learning where you would just sit there and be instructed at. I have a hard time imagining uh, liberally educated people just sitting back and listening to the great minds pontificate. Teaching philosophy, um, I find myself in a difficult place when it comes to that. Um, there's a long tradition of, of lecturing that um, I've been uh, educated into. I think a, a lot of active learning can take place through lectures, depending on how they're, they're designed. The lecture, uh, even though it's usually seen as a passive form of learning, is actually can actually be... Um, uh, a way to teach by example. Um, it's hard for students uh, to read Plato and Aristotle for, for the first time. So then the point is to lecture not from a pulpit, but among students, to see myself as part of the community, and to, to give them one way in which they can uh, approach the, um, the texts uh, as well, approach the, the ideas. Sometimes in our circles, I mean, I mean among educators, we say active learning to contrast it with something else, um, and I think we should stop doing that because if people are learning, like, and they're learning through, say, for example, a very traditional hierarchical lecture format, we don't think of that as active learning. But if they're learning, there's something active going on there. Sarah Ross understands active learning to be making connections between theory and practice. By using inquiry, analogies, and helping fellow students or friends work through their learning, it makes the learning active. This active engagement creates connections, which makes the learning stick.
Um, there's a lot of approaches um, that, that have come up um, around team-based learning. The idea being that students retain better what um, what they see themselves and what other students say. When we started talking about active learning, what was good about it is it got us away from the old notion that uh, students and just people in general were like empty containers that were waiting to be filled up by, you know, with the knowledge of uh, or the, the picture of knowledge or something like that. Not only are learners not passive that way, learners are also, even infants, if you spend time with small children, um, they're not empty. DS-106 is, again, another, at least a, at least a model for me, not for everyone, but for me, is that people made stuff. They didn't just talk about making stuff or theorize or read a textbook and reproduce it. But they got in there and they made stuff. They made art. They made music. They made all sorts of different things. The active learning part just came out of the fact that people were expected to not only make stuff, but if they don't know how, to go out and find out how. Yeah, it's like an invitation. It's an invitation to play. <laughs> it, is, it is. The invitation should be always until the day... We stop moving. The way I see it, active learning is really about making connections. It's asking students to connect with the knowledge of our discipline, and then to take that knowledge and connect it to their larger lives. To encourage our students in making these connections, we need to take into account their dispositions and their interests and their futures. We need to give them the opportunity to create something, whether that be a connection with a fellow student, or a piece of art. When we allow our students to take ownership of the artifacts that are created as a part of the learning process, we nurture an investment in that learning process and we really open the door for our students to say, this is mine. And that is active learning.